Hallelujah. Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 28. Jesus is actually, he's being confronted by uh, what's called the Jews, which would be the scribes and Pharisees of the day. Uh, then he said back to them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, that would be when he's going to be crucified, when they were going to crucify him, then shall you know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. Okay, now he also said, I don't say anything that I haven't heard my Father say. Now look at the next verse, verse 29. It says, and he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. So he's talking about I speak what he says that I should speak, and I do those things that he wants me to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. So tonight we're going to talk about speaking with power. There's, it, when you read the sayings of Jesus, what you see uh, is that he taught us to do this. He taught us to speak by faith. Okay, and tonight we're going to get further into the detail of it. Uh, and there's actually two aspects of doing this. Uh, Jesus said, if whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Okay, so he's talking about blowing the mountain into the sea. That went over big, praise the Lord. Amen. God, so you got an obstacle in your life? What Jesus taught us to do was to use words of power to deal with it, amen. to get rid of it. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Okay, now the other side of words of power, see that, that's, you could actually say that's like a destructive force in a way because it destroys the works of darkness in your life and you have the authority to use words of power against the enemy and his deeds and whatever he's, he's up to in your life to destroy things. On the other hand, which we, part of what we will talk about here tonight, you'll see it, you have also the ability and the right to use words of power to speak things into existence that don't operate in your life right now so that you can have whatever you say. Amen. Ooh, go ahead and say amen. So it works both ways. Amen. It's both something to uh, help you deal with obstacles, mountains, blow things out of the way, deal with the devil, words of power, hallelujah. Now you should understand in the earth, the devil is afraid of nobody but you. Everybody else he's got under control. Right. Now, uh, you need to make sure he doesn't have you under control. Amen. <laughs> also, and which would come by you using words of power to put him in his place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go ahead and say amen. So, now if you would please uh, go right over to Gospel of John chapter 16. Tonight we're going to follow a specific track on this to show you something about Jesus, God, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I would say God is good at using words of power. Yeah, I mean, he spoke the whole world and the universe, everything into existence. Amen. Still working. Hallelujah. So... We're instructed to follow after him. Okay. Now, so Jesus also, so look here in John chapter 16. Jesus is talking about the Holy Ghost, about his ministry. Uh, and he explains it like this. How be it, or that's how, when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Now, stop for a moment. The Holy Ghost has always been in the earth. But what Jesus is describing is he was going to come in a new way. It's almost like a job description. I like to describe it as a job description of what the Holy Ghost would be doing, 
which uh, what, he, what Jesus is talking about actually started on the day of Pentecost. Mm. Acts chapter 2. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Are you out there? When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Verse 14, he shall glorify me. Now that sounds suspiciously like what Jesus was just telling the scribes and Pharisees. So basically what Jesus was saying is I don't speak of myself either. I'm not the original source of what I say. I say what my father tells me to say, wants me to say. Are you there? Now that's actually part of a big picture of reality, uh, and, and, and we're, we're going to cut this down pretty good here tonight. I hope you're re ready for this, okay? It's shocking sometimes for people to find these things out, but you should understand it's totally liberating, okay? So, uh, whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Okay, now verse 14, he shall glorify, the Holy Ghost shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Now, so I've just shown you two passages where both Jesus and the Holy Ghost do not speak in their own right. Maybe that would be easier to understand. They don't speak of themselves or they're, they don't say you know, what... They want to say, Woo, hallelujah. Let's get your head going like this. Amen. We're talking about the Bible. How many of you believe the Bible? Okay, so that's what I just, in Jesus. How many of you believe in Jesus? Okay, so that's what I just read to you. So Jesus said, I don't speak of myself or from my own volition Okay, it's maybe another way of saying it. And the Holy Ghost doesn't do that. But people do that all the time. In fact, it's called an opinion. <laughs> people pride themselves in their opinion. Now, here, here's a little uh, wake-up call. Your opinion goes about as far as the end of your nose in power. I mean, because every other person on the earth has an opinion. And your opinion does not outweigh anybody else's opinion. In fact, most likely if you have an opinion, you got it from somewhere where else, even though you think it's original with you. It's really not. Somebody told you to think like that. Ooh, come on now, thought is not original either. I'm glad I came to church tonight. Hallelujah. So people pride themselves in their opinions. Uh, a little Bible reality here. You'd be better off without one. Because, you know, if you, you have to have your opinion, then you're not going to be like Jesus. He didn't have one. He said so. He said, I do, and I say what my Father does and says. And the Holy Ghost doesn't have one either. He doesn't say anything of himself. Woo. Come on, get your head going like that. Amen. Okay, so we're just taking this reality and applying it to the world that we live in. So there, the Bible talks about uh, the carnal mind. The, the carnal mind is enmity with God. Okay? And uh, to be carnally minded is death, spiritual death. Okay? So to get rid of your opinion is like dismissing your carnal mind from ruling your life. Amen. You don't need the, the carnal mind either. Well, what I think, yeah, I know what you think. You'd be better off without that for your own benefit. Hallelujah. 
Now, I realize this is really revolutionary for some people, and they listen to something like this, and they think, oh, wow, that's way out there. No, it's just right here in your own Bible. All I'm doing is reading to you what Jesus said. <laughs> Ooh, come on now. Hell, and this is, it's really not that foreign. It might be foreign to this generation and the, the culture that we're in today. Ooh, that's a big word, culture. Come on now. The culture keeps gravitating away from God. And people that have themselves woven into the culture take on the thinking patterns. That's what the carnal mind is. All of the speaking of the culture and, you know, ad adopt the same uh, philosophies, perspectives, opinions, etc. as the world. Go ahead and say amen. Okay, so people that do that are not going to speak words of power. It's just not going to happen. Hallelujah. So what Jesus is showing us here is something very specific about the way to get things done in your life spiritually. Ooh, now if it folds into your prayer life too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, go with me over to Hebrews chapter 11. I know this is shocking. Praise the Lord. That's just an indication of how far off track the culture is. If you think this is shocking, this is just nothing but Bible. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So it's kind of like unhooking from something. You know, like dragging this, this dead weight of, of the world so that you fit into the world. And so people at work don't think you're so weird. Amen. But what God wants you to do is unhook from the world in all of its philosophies, ways of doing things, and go with Jesus. Now Jesus knows what he's doing. You know, the world tries to make it sound, we're all so smart. Really? Okay, and then Jesus is over here. It sounds like he's all by himself. You know, to them. You know, Jesus sounds like a maniac. Go ahead and say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he's not. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. He's the creator. God used him, worked through him to create everything. All things were made by him and without him is not anything made that is made. I would say that's a little bit more than every person on earth with all of their opinions. Somebody in here ought to say amen except for one brother back there in the back. Well, you, I, I know, it, it, you feel kind of lost, you know, without your opinion and being hooked up with, you know, the whole world system. But you should hook up to Jesus. Now, Jesus has made it available for you to have the mind of Christ. Now, do you realize how superior the mind of Christ is to the carnal mind? Ooh, hallelujah. Now, with the mind of Christ, you don't have to, in him are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So you don't have to carry it all around in your head and impress everybody with how smart you are. You can just call on him. Amen. Ooh, thank you. You couldn't carry it all around in your head anyway if you wanted to. It's more than you're capable of dealing with. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. I'm glad I came to church tonight. Amen. Okay, so look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, that is by faith, the elders, he's talking about the people in the Old Testament, which 
he goes into the 11th chapter. You know, right after this, he goes through a list of people who uh, obtained a good report by living by faith. Hallelujah. Are you there? So, I mean, you can either be big in the world or you can be big in God. It's your, your choice. Hallelujah. Look at verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So all of this, everything you see is made of the word of God. Now, it should be pretty convincing that that is more powerful than saying your own words. Okay, so what we're going to do here, we're going to see that what God says is, look, you know, just like Jesus and just like the Holy Ghost, don't talk of yourself. Okay, you're, you're limited that way. There's only so much that you can do. How many of you are willing to admit that, that you're not God? Yeah. Amen. You're, you, might, you might be born of him, but you're not him. <laughs> it's okay. You know, people get elevated in their thinking. Hallelujah. The reality is, he says, look, I want you to use what I say. Speak my words the same way I call, have called the heavens into existence. If you take my word, it'll be powerful beyond anything you could ever say. And you say that instead of what you've been saying. And you'll have great things instead of what you have now. Which could, some of you have been doing this for a while. It, it could be good, but wow, the potentiality is unbelievable. Hallelujah. Now God, here, here's something about God that you should understand. God is not jealous of us. He's not afraid of us. He's not threatened by us. Jesus said, it's my Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's right. Amen. So there's no limitation on, put on the top of you to hold you down and keep you from developing. Now, so the, the, the reality of it is, on earth, man has not yet seen what it really looks like for people to be developed in Christ to the place, well, it, breaking through a, a, a certain level of, of growth and development is coming for the church. So it's, it's all prophesied and predicted. God set the stage for the church to come into this. The measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Go ahead and say amen. Amen. So he's not trying to hold you back. He's not trying to hold you down. He's not afraid of you. He's not jealous of you. And it's all his idea for you to get bigger. Yes. But you get bigger by losing yourself. That's it. Amen. You keeps you small. How many of you realize that? That's just, I mean, that's, that's New Testament 101. Hallelujah. Okay. <clears throat> so, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, that's the creative side of faith. So, that you and I can call those things which be not as though they were Okay, meaning that we can call into existence 
things that we have been given in our lives. Jesus said the Holy Ghost will show you things to come. He will show you what I've given you. And he won't speak of himself. The idea is to get us to say it. Believe it. Act on it. Say it with our mouths. Hallelujah. Now, there's a miraculous thing that happens when a person, a Christian, gets the word of God on the inside of them. It becomes a part of them. Okay? So... That person cannot be told, you can't have this. Because the word that's designed to produce that has already gotten in them. And they're, they're convinced beyond anything that could stop it. Are you out there? Now this is actually what's happening to the church today. This is what's happening. Instead of, you know, feeding on religious tradition and the opinions of men, Christians are listening to what the Word says, letting the Word get on the inside of them, and then God brings that to pass on the inside, and it becomes this unbelievable, it's unbelievable to man, but it's, it's not anything outside of what you already see in the Bible. It's just that what, what people do is they go, oh, that's, that's coming. But they don't really believe it's coming. Amen. It's just like that girl, Rhoda, uh, that went and answered the door when, when Peter was let out of prison. You know, they didn't believe that either. And they're praying, Lord, let him out. So he gets out. The angel lets him out. He comes and knocks on the door. The girl opens the thing. Oh, it's Peter. Instead of opening the door, she goes back and tries to tell them. They said, ah, oh, you're, you're seeing things. Come on, are you there? That's just the way people operate. You know, finally, oh, wow. You know, they open the door and let Peter in. How'd you get out? Well, an angel came. Remember when the angel smote him in the side and the door of the prison swung open of its own accord and then he walks out into the walkway and the angel disappears. Oh, wow, I've just been let out of prison. Which is what they were praying. Back over the house. Come on and say amen. God is good. Are you out there tonight? Okay, so God puts this power house inside of his people and it grows up now the you know that the the part that i just told you from the book of acts that was very early in the church and obviously there was more growth coming those same people later were found doing things that rattled the world at the time i mean you, you should understand that the Roman Empire was afraid of the body of Christ because they knew they were dealing with power they had never seen before. Ooh, come on and say amen. Now, so, uh, you know, our, our thing, the body of Christ thing, is not to overthrow nations or any of that kind of thing. We don't have to. Hallelujah. We're, you know, Jesus is going to come back and set up his kingdom. Hallelujah. So we don't have to overthrow anything. Ooh, go ahead and say amen. But the, the power necessary to bring all this to pass has already been given to us. And if we take it and let it produce what it produces then we'll be speaking words of power that rattle nations. Because you, you see, the thing is, there's a difference between talking about something and actually doing something that works. So people talk about things all the time that never happen. Sounds good. Okay. Hallelujah. 
So j just like th this thing that I'm telling you about now, see, I personally, I've been around long enough to have been mocked by the body of Christ about, oh, now they're going to call things into existence. Yeah, been doing that for 40 years now. What do you have? You want to you wanna compare? What I'm doing is working. Look what it, it has produced. Come on and say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So that's kind of a little soapbox, you know, step down off the soapbox because it's not of me or of you. Hallelujah. All right, so look over at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. He says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Now, just a little bit, you remember when the nation of Israel uh, crossed the River Jordan, which, by the way, parted supernaturally, and they walked across on dry ground. The water piled up for miles, you know, actually flooded other places. Okay? Then when they got over there on the other side, there was Jericho, so now listen to this. God told them what to do about the wall around Jericho. Okay, remember, they went around the, the, the first day, they went around once, the, seven days. And then the last day they went around seven times and then they all shouted. Now, guess what that was? Words of power. And the wall came down. Now, they were saying what he told them to say. How many of you are there? Amen. All right, so that's what a profession is. In the Greek, it's the Greek word homologia, okay, that, that particular spot. Okay, it's a family of Greek words. It means same words. So when we speak the same words as God, it's as though he's saying it. Okay? Hallelujah. Now, so to add, add the, uh, the element in here that God wants us to, to see, when God created man, which you are, mankind, now, you've been born again in the image of Christ Jesus. How many of you are born again? All right, so you're a new creature. You are the new creature, but you're still there in that Adamic body. It has value. Because when God gave Adam dominion, he, the dominion was for the body. And then he gave Adam authority to you with his tongue. Remember, he named the animals. Okay, so Adam's voice rules in the earth. That's the reason why Jesus had to come and be born into the body of a babe. Without the body, he didn't have the authority to change what was happening with mankind. Okay, so you still have that body. Now, there, so there are no angels, not the devil himself has the authority in the earth that you have. So that little three inch member in your mouth carries with it the dominion that God gave to mankind. <coughs> Hallelujah. Are you there? All right. So you're in the right package. And what you say goes, which is also the reason why when people are talking death, doom, and destruction, that goes too. They're just creating a, the world to live in. And the devil gave them everything to say to make sure it was sealed tight. Come on and say amen. Okay, but God says, okay, you still have the tongue. You still have the body. You still have authority here in the earth. Okay, now he's given you a new element of, he's given you the right to use his words. Okay, come on, are you out there? Okay, so it's twofold, it's double the power. 
It's the Adamic body, the Adamic tongue, and the words of God in your mouth. Now, so when the devil hears you talking those words of power, he cannot distinguish between you and the Lord Jesus Christ physically. He doesn't know the difference. Hallelujah. So what you say with your mouth in your life, with the word of God, the devil can't do anything to stop it. So all you got to do is say what God says. Same thing Jesus said. I don't speak of myself. You know, the scribes and Pharisees, you know, they, they were they're living in a dream world. They were talking to the creator. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. They're talking to the word himself. And they thought it was so important for him to talk like them. Are you there? <laughs> you know, for the record, you should understand, Jesus never talked like them. He is the original. But even he would not take that position of original authority. He left it for his father. How many of you follow that? See, it's prideful. Remember what, what the devil did? You know, I will exalt myself above the most high. I will be like him. I, 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 yeah. Right, okay, go ahead. How many of you are there? Hallelujah. Okay, so Jesus, what Jesus is showing you, instead of being like the devil, Come on. <laughs> you can be like him. So what he does is he says, I never say anything that I haven't heard my father say. I'm going to take his word and say it the same way the universe was created. So Jesus did it that way. I think we ought to follow his steps. Okay. And then G when Jesus was explaining the Holy Ghost, who is now with us as our helper, he won't cross that line either. He will not take it upon himself to be his own source of authority. He won't do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So when I talk around my house, I don't have to be a big shot. I don't have to thump my chest and bellow. That's the reason why God wanted to show it to Elijah like it's, a, you know, it, it, it's not the, the, the wind, it's not the fire, it's that little voice. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. All I've got to do is say it. That's right. That's right. Say the word and the devil's got to go. Quick. Pack his stuff and hit the road. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Hallelujah. So to be like him, we have to act like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. Well, I'm going to ask you, if you would, please, to stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Speaking with power. Hallelujah. Call it in. You have the right to tear down, just like a prophet. You have the authority and the ability to build up. So if you say it's going to be great in your life, it's going to be great. Not to forget, see, you've already been redeemed. You already have the blessing of Abraham in your life. P people uh, struggle with family. 
with, you know, the, the issues of life. Okay. Health, wealth. Okay. All of those things are already covered for us. So when we take that word on the inside of us and we say by his stripes we're healed. The devil has to pack his duds and get out of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that actually is the beginning of your spiritual house. See, you're building a house right now. And the Apostle Paul talked about, you know, the reality. You don't want to build your life out of wood, hay, and stubble. You want it to be gold, silver, and precious stones. Amen. Amen. Gold, silver, and precious stones withstand the fire of circumstance. Change. And ultimately, building your life like that, it'll be added to the house that we're, all, we're working on the building that has the true foundation whose builder and maker is God. So you see, that is not a life of futility. But you have to believe that. You have to believe that wood, hay, and stubble is a waste of time. It's not going to produce anything. It's not going on the house. It's not even going to make it out of the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to ask you, if you would, please to say this with me. Lord Jesus, my intention is to use my tongue to build the kingdom of God in my life, and in this world, in the name of Jesus, I will speak what the Word says, not what the world says. Thank you, Father, for the Word of God. I put the Word in my heart and in my mouth. I will speak your Word only. Thank you, Father, for blessing, power, Eternity to come out of my mouth. In Jesus' name, amen.